New York City, an urban jungle. It's a global hub for finance, culture, and fashion with a diverse population and a rich history. The city is famous for its world-class museums, Broadway theaters, Central Park, and a vibrant culinary scene. It's a city that never sleeps and has something for everyone. Like most big cities, it's not without crime. Detective James Dawson knows this well. He's been a detective with the NYPD for 10 years. He has seen things that changed him forever. The things people can do to each other is unfathomable. On this cool autumn day, he receives a new case. James decided to work on it at home since he wanted to get away from all the office madness. Once he got home, he poured himself a drink, sat down in his favorite chair, and started playing with his wedding ring. It's been six months since Sarah left him. She eventually couldn't take all the long nights he worked and his obsession for closing all of his cases. James Dawson is the only detective with no open cases in the NYPD. Though impressive, it did take a toll on his marriage. Okay, let's see what we have here. James proceeds to open the file and began reading. Male victim, mid-40s, with a gunshot wound to the head. The preliminary report said, possible suicide. John Doe's fingerprints weren't in the system and dental records came up dry. He was found in his apartment. All doors and windows were locked from the inside. No apparent struggle. The toxicology report found nothing out of the ordinary except alcohol in his blood. The quantity wasn't that high, so he wasn't drunk. That's why you gave me this case, he said, with a smirk on his face. Studying the case photos carefully, he could distinguish something that resembled ligature marks on his wrists. They were faint, but present. The blood spatter on the wall was also out of place. The victim couldn't have gotten that far back if he committed suicide. No gunshot residue on his hands as well. This is a homicide. It's pretty obvious. This is something even a rookie detective could figure out. He checked the time of death. Around 12 a.m. But how did the killer exit the room when everything was locked from the inside? He noticed the first responder on the scene, Ray Mitchell, an average officer at best. He was also being investigated by IA for bribery and embezzling. Could he be involved? He grabbed his radio and tried to reach his sergeant. This is Dawson. Nothing but static. He tried again. This is Dawson, come in. Again, no answer damn radios he tried to call him but couldn't get through he poured himself another drink and finished reading the report there were a lot of things that didn't add up in the report it was stated that police knocked the door down upon arrival but in the photo evidence the door looked intact it was pretty obvious that the victim was left-handed his watch was worn on his right hand, the belt buckle was on the opposite side, and his notepad and pen were on the left side. Yet, in the crime scene photos, the gun was found in his right arm. Could Ray Mitchell be behind all of these inconsistencies? He tried calling him, but there was no answer. He tried to reach his sergeant. Same story. Something stinks here. I'd better get back to the station. He said to himself, as James got up to get his jacket, he noticed he couldn't find his keys. He almost turned the apartment upside down, but still, he couldn't find them. This is funny. I locked myself in. It was getting pretty late. Almost midnight. James got very annoyed and angry. What happened to his keys? It was like the ground swallowed them whole. As Detective Dawson was searching his apartment, he noticed a couple of blood droplets on the floor. Puzzled by this, he leaned in to get a closer look. They looked fresh. As he stood up, more and more started to appear on the rug. They were dripping down from his own face. 
Shocked, he rested his arm upon his face and was absolutely stunned. He was bleeding from his right temple. As the clock stroked midnight, he fell to the floor in the exact same position as in the crime scene photos. Just before he hit the ground, it all flashed back to him. While he was working on a case, James found multiple connections between his Sergeant Ryan Cooper and a well-known drug cartel. Both him and Ray were involved in high drug trafficking and smuggling of antiques. When he found out, he threatened that if they wouldn't turn themselves in, he would go to internal affairs. He gave them just 24 hours. When their time was almost up, they came to his apartment to try and reason with James. Both Officer Ray and Sergeant Ryan tried to explain that these are not the kind of people he wants to mess with. They are very dangerous and that they can get to anyone you love or have loved in your life. That they were also trapped by these individuals, loved ones always being threatened and followed. You can still walk away. Sergeant Ryan said. No, your time is up. Responded Dawson. Before he could blink, Ray Mitchell shot him point blank in his own apartment. He would later call the police, make it look like a suicide, and fake all of the reports. To this day, James's death is closed as being a suicide. In the end, the only case he couldn't solve was his own death. The people that live in that apartment can sometimes hear Detective James Dawson as he tries to solve his last case. Every day at midnight, he restarts his investigation, stuck between the land of the living and the dead.